Hello and welcome to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener, really better for you, beauty, skincare, and beyond. I try all these crazy things out for you, share my brutally honest opinion. Also, you have a better idea of what to buy, and more importantly, what not to buy. So you're not wasting your money on stuff, you know what I mean? As you could tell in the title, I am talking about the new Ilia C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. Everybody's talking about it. I have five things I want you to know before you buy it. So stick around and let's get it. I have tone one. There are three tones and packaged in a lot of plastic. They do have a program. I speak to all of it back on the website in the scorecard post. Did I already say I purchased this and no one's paying me to say the following? Cause I did and no one is. Okay, great. I like that kind of thing, by the way. Take two seconds, hit the like button. It really supports the channel over here, so thanks in advance. All right, number one, ingredients. Like I mentioned, encapsulated vitamin C, supposed to maintain the potency, stability, very important. A lot of pieces are being published right now on the efficacy of skincare and how it goes down rapidly if it's left on a shelf. So you're buying it, you're spending money, and it's not even working. So I appreciate that they put extra effort into that. They encapsulated in the formula doesn't let air in, it's not gonna get contaminated. While I appreciate that, I do, I do. The plastic here, even with their recycling program, Pack Collective and all the rest of it, I just, we'll get to that later. Zinc oxide, 10% mineral SPF 40, pretty good. Niacinamide is at 2%, they give all percentages, which I love. These are also percentages that are included at a quote active level. It's a percentage shown to benefit the skin. So they're not just saying there's niacinamide and there's 0.05 amount in it, which I like seeing this. Do I know that for sure? Am I a dermatologist? Absolutely not, but thank you. Capric triglyceride can be glycerin with coconut oil. It doesn't always have to be, so check with the brand if you are intolerant to that. Super sensitive skin types might want to double check this. If you have reactive skin, I looked at a lot of other reviews. Some people did run into some issues there. Everybody's different, it's very personal. But other than that, unless the skincare actives get to you, there's rosemary leaf extract, by the way, at the very end. That can sometimes be something that irritates people. Not everybody, not me, but just letting you know. Otherwise, no major red flags, just a lot of skincare in here. And they're following through on that claim. All right, application. Please review what the brand recommends in terms of application. What I did was not that. I shook it quickly, rubbed it into the skin, and it pilled. Now, read the brand, Brittany. Read the brand. You shake it for 10 seconds. You pump it out. By the way, a very little bit comes out onto your hand. I wish there was a little bit more, but c'est la vie. And then you pat it into the skin. It works. It works that way. Otherwise, you're just gonna get pill city. And a lot of people said, this is pilling. And it has to be so frustrating for the brand when you're like taking all these extra steps to say, please don't rub it. That's how you apply it. It's quite simple once you listen to the brand recommendations and it worked really nicely for me. It is very silky as a formula, but it's not heavy and it's not oily. Those are key things, by the way. I have tried serum SPFs in the past that were oily and not heavy, but oily. They left kind of a slick behind. I'll talk about them later. Four out of five for application. Okay, moving on. Finish, it's supposed to give you a sheer glowy finish. I saw a sheer glowy finish. There's really no coverage here. There's not supposed to be coverage here. It comes in three tones, probably just to help mix in with whatever shade your skin is. There is no white cast though. Maybe it's there to prevent any particular white cast from happening. I saw none of that. The light glow really was subtle. I wouldn't say it was dewy. I would just say the skin kind of bounced a little bit and I loved it. Touch test, phenomenal. Again, it really stood out for that. It really was not sticky or tacky and I didn't feel like I could just slide right off my face. Overall for finish, it got a four out of five on the scorecard. Next scent, I wanna talk about that for two seconds because on SPFs, even the serum SPFs, they get stinky. Like they add fragrance or they don't or whatever. Very, very, very subtle, if any. Five out of five on scent, you will not have that sunscreen scent or some other fragrance scent which is a big deal for a product like this, I think. I think it's kind of important for the SPF side of it, not so much the serum side, although some serums can be stinky. Final question is the wear test. How did it perform? How did it do in the sun? Did it slide off my face? All the things. So I spent an hour or so in the sun a few days a week. I'm trying to get outside more, which is working. I used three to four, maybe five pumps. I did not see any redness. I was in direct sunlight and it worked for me. Do your research here. What works for me might not work for you and consult a dermatologist if you need to. In terms of the brightening, I'm not seeing enough brightening for me to go, wow, this is really changing my skin and lifting and brightening. I am 
am seeing a little. Not enough to see in a before and after yet though. So I just wanted to throw that in here. Another key thing I want to mention about this is it mixes so well with other products. It was really easy to work with and didn't settle into fine lines, didn't create texture on my face. It just made my face look slightly glowy. Wear test received a three out of five, almost got a four, but I gave it a three just because of the brightening claims. I think I'm gonna wait a little bit and get back to you on that one. Total score here was a 16 out of 20. Pretty good. Will it make Brits picks? Not yet. Mainly because of the plastic. Otherwise, if it were in a more sustainable container, I would really like this product and I surprised myself. I really thought about it a lot, probably too much from all angles. I've just never tried anything like it. 64 bucks for one fluid ounce. It's expensive. It's expensive. I get that it's encapsulated technology and if it brightens like a champ and does what it says it's going to do, then I think that could potentially validate it. You could also have a vitamin C serum that does that for you and an SPF. And both of those combined could either be more or they could be less depending on what you're using and what your skin likes. So that's what I think. That's what the scorecard says. As we all know, my word is just not gospel. It is just one opinion of thousands and millions out there. So let me know what you think about this product. Have you purchased it? Did you like it? Are you thinking about buying it? You're like, why is it $64 and so much plastic? Let me know. Leave your comment below. I would love to hear from you and provide context on your skin type if you've tried it and it's worked or hasn't. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it helpful. As always, that's why I do this. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss a thing. And I will see you right back here for more honest reviews. Until then, bye.